All right, welcome back, everybody. I pray y'all are having a wonderful, blessed day as we thank the Most High for so much. My title now says, Backing Up the Preacher on the Organ. Oh, yeah. Might as well say, uh-oh, JT. Got another hot topic here. Um, and most musicians probably will hate this video, but not all musicians. Um, so I'm going to really relate to what I'm saying in this video. And if you just happen to be a musician looking at this video or even a pastor, though. this is um, not to, you know, disrespect nobody in no kind of way, but, you know, to answer some questions, uh, because I had a good question about this video, uh, doing this video, from you, uh, Musician Man 81 and big shout out to you. Um, first of all, let me say this, because music is very important. The most I designed it, the most I love it. But there is a time for music, and then there's a time for no music. And it has to be in order. And that's why I thank the most high for discernment. We need to know when to do things and when not to do things. Uh, music is beautiful. Uh, we all know that. But then there is demonic spirits behind a lot of music also. Because the devil has his way of showing us what music means to him. Now, there are times when the music ministry is so powerful that it's hard for a preacher to come up behind that and preach. And then there are times when the preaching is so powerful that musicians shouldn't even touch the instruments at that time. Now, I'm a firm believer in when the word is being taught, leave that music alone. And I grew up in all that hooping and hollering and shouting and making the organ player jump three or four keys. And I always wondered growing up, what was it all about? And it takes the focus off true pastors. And then you got pastors out here that will tell you, don't get on that organ and bag me up. I don't need it. Don't get on the piano, young man. I don't need that. I, I mean no disrespect, but I don't want nobody to bag me up. The word is going to do what the word is going to do. But you don't see too many preachers like that no more. Some are, but then some are not, my brothers and sisters. I've seen where the spirit was so high that some preachers, once again, they couldn't preach because the praise and worship was just, it was extremely high. But then I've seen a messed up praise service that destroyed the whole service. Now, that I said that. Let's get let's get to the real truth here. Um, and I want to use this word, entertainment. Oh yeah. Because what we have now is more entertaining than true praise and worship. It seems like now it's, it's still too many people. They want their emotions fed. Baby, can you sing that song? I don't I don't feel good. I want need to hear my song. I was going through, it's okay with that to an extent, but what good is, is you feeding your emotions and then soon you leave the church building and you right back to your same messed up life, lifestyle, excuse me. I've seen this too much, emotions, emotions, emotions. It, it, it It's to the point now where you have entertaining preachers, entertaining praise teams, entertaining choir members. But what is the word, y'all? So many people, once again, love to be entertained, and they just got in the form of just going to church. I wonder what the choir going to sing this morning. Some people won't even stay around to hear the word. They'll leave after the choir get through singing. Man, I don't want to hear that brother preach, man. Uh, I understand there's some preachers out here that just can't really, you know, preach. And then there's some, uh, I noticed the ones that really can preach and teach, they're the ones nobody want to say amen on. It get quiet as a whistle. But where is the true worship? With all this entertaining, but where is the word? Where is the deliverance? So I'm not talking about everybody that's like this, but it's sad how many people are caught up in how good such and such can play and how good such and such can sing when he preach, but they're not concerned about how good can that person really live. How good he sound preaching, but can he practice what he preach? See, um, I did a video last month called 
the focus is on the showing out. I guess this is like a, a part two to that. Um, this showing out, this this showing out stuff is just it's destroying these churches, man. When I'm in the church, if somebody invite me to their church, and the minister, I mean, if they really teaching, I hate when a musician get up and mess that up. I hate that because some some musicians play so loud, and the more and more the preacher talks, the louder and louder they get. Now you got a battle once again. See, I'm, I'm I'm like this. Let me hear the word. Cut me up with the word. Forget the organ playing at that at that time. Cut me up with the word. But once again, when it's real preachers preaching, it's real quiet. See, when you when you study the Bible, um, a lot of the stuff that we see now, my brothers and sisters, it wasn't done that way in the Bible. See, the the most I showed us his divine way, his order. Do you think our Savior needed a, a organ player to back him up? He needed music behind him. Do you think Paul needed music behind him when he was teaching? Do you do you think Peter needed it on the on the, on the day of the Pentecost when he preached? I didn't say when he played music, but when he preached, three thousand souls got saved and baptized without music. Now you got all this music, all this equipment, all this technology. You can't even get three people to get delivered now. And most of them are the ones that's in leadership. Somebody catch that later. We must understand who's adding to the body versus who's adding to their church building. Teach Holy Spirit. Oh, man, come join our church. We got a great choir, man. We do this, we do that. There's so many people always talking about telling people to come to their building instead of telling them to come to Christ. See, you don't need no building to tell somebody to come to the body. If you do have the building, hey, knock yourself out, amen, hallelujah. Because there are some good buildings up out of operating school, but Satan got buildings up also. So let me let me get back to this, this bagging up thing. So when you when you always see these preachers, I'm, I'm gonna say something that's, that most people ain't gonna even probably agree with. When you see most of these preachers, they need the music to back them up. A lot of them are those ones teaching that mess, that fake prosperity gospel, and they, they want to just get the congregation on fire, then they want to beg for money. The reason why they can use that organ player a lot of time because that organ player is going to cover up a lot of those lies while they're preaching. See, think about this for a moment. You don't even know you being lied to because you in your emotions. You hooping and hollering out, Amen, Pastor. Preach. And that music just got see music. One thing about music, it'll get you. And you talking about preach and preach. And man, sitting up there lying. Man, if you're talking about Adam built the ark and you said preach, Pastor Adam showed did. You didn't even know that fast that you got caught up in a lie because you was being entertained. So through this entertaining behind this organ playing and jumping these keys, they can sneak in lie after lie after lie. And then you can't even recognize the truth when it comes. And most of these musicians now that you see are just doing the church like it's a gig. Coming to church high. Going outside smoking while the preaching is being preached. You see what I'm saying? So much going on outside in the car, hanging around outside. It's so much disrespect. Now, I ain't talking about everybody. See, somebody got mad at that. Y'all know me, man. I don't care about who getting mad. The truth is the truth. Outside, chilling. When I was um, teaching the piano online, um, I made so many, on here, matter of fact, I made so many musicians mad because they kept wanting me to teach so many preacher cards on her. And I think a long time ago I did maybe two or three videos about uh, bagging up a preacher. Uh, but I explained a long time ago how I don't do that. Man, I haven't bagged up a preacher. I don't know how long. Probably been almost about 15 years now. No lie. At least 15 to 16, maybe even 20. Behind bagging a pastor up, 
I don't do it. I don't, I don't even care nothing for that. I, I never did, man, because to me it's just it's just a distraction in so many ways. Now, I ain't talking about all the time it could be a distraction, but the majority of the time it's a distraction because, like I said in the video the other day, when the people sitting around looking at the organ player, you know, getting so fancy with his cars and jumping keys and the pastor trying to follow them, the distraction is not on the word. The distraction is on how good they singing and playing the organ. It becomes a little, a little entertaining once again. See, I love, I love music. I love the piano, but ain't no way I'm gonna put the piano over the top of the word. That word come first. You see what I'm saying? And I've, I've made so many preachers man, because man, if I'm visiting somebody and they know they, they know I can play the piano or the organ, they, they see me sitting in the back and hey man, come on up, brother. Now, I didn't come for all that. See, when I'm coming to hear the word, I'm coming to hear the word. Brother P.P. Drawings, if you're looking at this video, I know you are. Man, major shout out to you. You remember that old DVD you sent me about your Pastor Cochran, man? Dynamic messages, man. One thing I love about when that brother preach, I don't hear nothing in the way. All I hear is the word chopping people up, man. I remember one time he said in one of his old videos, I don't care if you get up and leave my building, as long as your blood is not on my hands. Man, if we had more pastors like that, man, instead of all that entertaining, when Pastor Cochran is preaching, it's quiet. That's one thing I like about uh, my man that just died, man, uh, Pastor Stephen Darby. Darby, uh, excuse me, man. Darby would tell, his, tell the congregation, y'all give my sons a hand. And then the music shuts off. For that next hour and something, you ain't going to hear nothing but the word chopping you up. That's how we're supposed to be. There's a time to shut that music off. So once again, do I do I care for all that bagging the preacher up, man? No. I was sick of that, man. Even in my in my twenties, I was sick of that, man. Got tired of that, man. I got tired of all that hooping and hollering. That. The, the the preacher sound like he got a crack rib of it, and the organ player steady going up, modulating two or three keys. What is the focus on? The word, or the excuse me, or the music? See, one thing about bagging up the preacher, it excites so many people. But the sad thing is you're getting so excited because of the music, but the music is it's not hitting you hard enough to make you want to change your life. Now, what's wrong with that picture? Let me, let me take it a step higher. Look at what's on most of the pianos and the organs now. Gay musicians. Just like I said in the other video, if you just happen to be a homosexual looking at this video, I love you. I just pray that your heart change. But I'm, I'm tying it in with this music, especially in these in these Baptist and Kojic, or some may pronounce it Kojic, churches, man. You, you That's all you see, but not all of them. Not all the churches are like that. But that's the majority of your music department now. And, and all this playing and singing and, singing and hooping and hollering and screaming the word and musicals and revivals, ain't nobody getting delivered. You coming in the same way you was, and you leaving the same way you was Sunday after Sunday. That holding around deacon still a hope. Come on, y'all. The praise team leader still like that. Them brothers in the corner still getting high. You can smell the weed during service. That you can still smell the the drinking from the hangover the night before. Where's the deliverance? So you're gonna play your way right on into the lake of fire. You're going to sing your way right on into the lake of fire. You're going to preach your way right on into the lake of fire if you don't get this mess out of your life. Whoever you are, whatever whatever that sin is, you got to get right, y'all. See, I ain't scared to say what people are scared to say. I don't, I don't care who getting mad at this video because I love you enough to tell you the truth and forget about your feelings. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't even do a video or say nothing at all. Stay gay. Stay messed up. Stay hoarding around. Stay an adulterer. Stay a liar. Stay a cheater. Stay a uh, whatever. Stay a prostitute. No. I care enough about you to tell you the truth and forget about how the hell you feel. I'd rather you be mad at me and then get delivered and be on your way to heaven and get saved than to just leave you, leave you the way you are. See, I, all my job is to do is tell you the truth, give you the message, pray for you, get out the way. When it's past that, ain't nothing else I can do for you. You have to want that change. And y'all know what? In my videos, how many times you see music behind me? 
It's quiet, ain't it? It's quiet. Sometimes I might have a little intro on it before a video starts, but I don't need no music behind me. I don't need all that. I don't even need a building. See, I love what I'm doing because I'm going to the ones that ain't in the building. And then I'm going to the ones that's in the building. That's why I still go to the building. Because I'm concerned about the ones in the building more concerned about the ones on the outside of the building. Somebody will catch that later. When it's time for teaching, it needs to be quiet. Because once again, the word is the most important thing. But that's just there's a cutoff time for music. There's a cutoff time. But this entertaining mode is what most people like to stay in, y'all. Souls need to be saved. I don't, I don't need no, let me just speak for myself. I don't need my soul entertained. I need my soul saved. See, the most high can use music to do his work, but the most high don't need music to do his work all the time. Because once again, this music can be a distraction at times. It's just like growing up when a woman wasn't dressed right and she in the pulpit, if she was sitting right in front of that pulpit and her legs was open and you could see all her business, that preacher would lose focus. Nowadays, you lose focus at often time because a lot of the women in the church are dressing so revealing now. They every, they showing all their business. It's, it's everything is out. When they walking around, you over their stomach because you don't, man, look at her right there. The mom dancing, the, the clothes is getting shorter and shorter, thinner and thinner, tighter and tighter. It's a distraction. So many things are a distraction now, but the problem is don't, wanna, don't nobody want to say nothing about it, nor correct it. And if you say something about it, like I'm doing this video, man, he a hater. Man, that dude, that dude always tripping, man. He, man, he needs to leave folks alone. And people be knowing in the back of their mind this stuff ain't right. That's why I like in the old, on the Old Testament, you can see in the Bible that there are often times where there was a connection between music being played and the spirit moving in people's heart. Just like when David played, uh, I guess there was a harp to calm those evil spirits, you know, from Saul, King Saul at that time. So there's a time for the music, and then there's a time the music needs to be cut off once again. That's what made me just quit going to so many of these churches, man, and the music was just so loud. Couldn't even hear what the, what the preacher was saying. That's a problem. Because once again, you can't if you can't hear the word, then your focus is on something else. So y'all, all this um, getting behind the pastor, bagging him up, and so many pastors, I have to make this point as I close, they would always ask musicians when they hire them, can you play the organ? Can you play an A-flat? Do you know how to modulate in your keys? If I'm in A-flat, can you go up a half step? Can you go over a whole step? Can you keep going up? Can you go all the way to the key of C sharp from there? I know my keys, brother. And you know my you know my question be to them type of pastors. Can you preach? Can you pastor? Can you teach? Are you living what you teaching? How is your life at home? If your home if, if your home is not in order, why are you preaching? See, I mess a pastor up when I sit down with them one on one. Because I'm I'm gonna ask them some questions. They, I ain't say, brother, ain't nobody never asked me that before. Well, they should have. Your main concern is can I play the organ? You're not concerned about my lifestyle. You're not concerned about my heart, how I'm living. What kind of pastor is you? See, it's, it's to the point now where so many pastors, they do not care about how somebody's lifestyle is as long as they can play. I even heard it before so many times. Brother, I ain't worried about it. I'm not worried about all that. You can just... If you can just play, if you can just get here on Sunday morning, say, what, how much you need on Sunday, 500, 600? I got that, man, all that other stuff. And then next thing you know, man, that musician done messed around with, with, them, with such and such over there, man, that man related. Yo, yo, music ministry that fell all the way apart because you was worried about money. Because mo most pastors know that music draws it draws so many people, but that word should keep you.
That word should cut you up. That word should have, that word should make you feel so convicted. It should have you having to change your heart. But the problem is, most people don't want to change. And as I close, y'all know, y'all know what I always say. If your heart don't change, your actions will not change. So that's my little take, brother, on this from this bagging up the preacher with all this music stuff. There's a time for music, and there's a time not to play music. And that's just the truth. So y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day.